So we have Jean Christophe, Gabriel, and now we have Jean Paul. Oh, can you stop? Sorry. Oh, stay here. <laughs> so if I understand correctly, French people have uh, shorter talks, no? That's the idea. <laughs> well, uh, we used to 20 <laughs> minutes, uh, so it's 20 for everyone, but some have exceeded. Okay, so is it working? So I would like to thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to, to present some of our recent work. Uh, I am come from Bordeaux, and I will talk about the polyelectrolyte complexes. But um, I will try. Uh, uh, I will start with a more uh, pragmatic question: and uh, is that easy to formulate colloidal complexes? And uh, the answer, uh, actually, for example, a nanoparticle solution and, and, and the polyelectrolyte solution. So, and the answer here depends on what you are doing first uh, at the bench. Uh, either you, you, you pour particle into poly polyelectrolyte solution and you get a useful gel and you're happy. But if you do the reverse, you get a, a precipitate, which is useless. And so you start all over the experiment many times until uh, you understand that you have to change uh, the addition order or if you have to, to reduce the, the concentration. And this is uh, basically linked to the fact that most of the systems that we're dealing with are out of equilibrium. And obviously, uh, the generated morphologies are strongly dependent on the way uh, you prepare them. Okay? So pathway matter, we, we, know, we know that very well. Um, so this experiment triggered many, many years ago what basically we are trying to do nowadays. And what we are trying to do is, uh, when we can, is try to link uh, the assembly thermodynamics with the generated uh, morphologies through a formulation pathway to better understand and control how the different components are coming into anti-main contact and generate different morphology with a given uh, Delta G. So today I will focus um, my talk on uh, polyelectrolyte complexes. So this is a very well-known system. We know that uh, when uh, you pour into a solution a positively charged polyelectrolyte, they, they form complexes. And the main driving force is the entropy uh, through the release of counter ions and uh, sometimes uh, small water molecules. Um, but depending on the system, on the, the, the chemistry of the system, you, you can get either a precipitate, so you, you can see it, uh, you, you see it at the bottom of your vial uh, when you are dealing with charge stoichiometry. And from what I know from the, the experiment that we have been doing quite a lot, uh, the, the complexation enthalpy is here always exothermic, um, and the binding constant are quite high. Um, Sometimes, depending on the system, uh, you can get another liquid-liquid uh, fast separation, but in this time, you get uh, what people are calling coassivate. Uh, in this case, in fact, you don't get aggregates, but rather spherical objects that are in equilibrium with the supernatant. And uh, they are spherical, so meaning that here you have a small but measurable surface tension. And from experiment that we are being performing, uh, the complexation enthalpy is more or less positive, meaning that it acts against the minimization of delta G. And also the binding constant are smaller, much more than in the case of the aggregation. Uh, this is a take home message. The generated morphology obviously depends on the interaction strengths and the pathway, as I shown you before. But the interaction strength is not only physics, obviously. Uh, chemistry is very important, as I will show you later on. Uh, so th this is the two systems that we are basically working with uh, recently. So this one is giving rise to a coacervate. Co it's a very used um, uh, system. And this one, the PSSP that Mac, is giving rise to aggregation. Uh, this one is in equilibrium. This one is out of equilibrium. By the way, uh, if you look at the, the manning parameters, they're completely equivalent on both sides, but uh, the generated morphology are completely different. Um, and um, here, I would like to show you that it's possible to, to get a, a, a structural signature 
of the coacervation versus aggregation. And for that, we are using a, a fast mix, mixing uh, device uh, where you can basically uh, uh, mix two polyelectrodes very fast uh, in the range of milliseconds. And after, you can follow the, 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 the assembly kinetic uh, at a very, very small sampling rate, around 20 microseconds. And uh, you are using light at 90 degrees. So what we can see here is that um, at stoichiometry, uh, using stop flow, we have a clear different signature between aggregation, uh, where we have here, it's, this is an optical uh, images, and uh, uh, coacervation. Coacervation, it's a super fast uh, transition that starts around a couple of milliseconds after mixing the solution. <coughs> aggregation lasts much longer. Um, so now, if we keep the same system, uh, the PDMAC PSS, which is giving rise to aggregation without salt, and we decide to tune the interaction by adding salt, and uh, doing so, in fact, it's possible to go through uh, different phases. To st we, we start with uh, uh, aggregation, and by increasing the salt content, we are able, in fact, to go to the coacervate phase region with a neat signature uh, from a stop at flow experiment. If you increase the salt content above two molar, nothing will, will change, no interaction will occur inside. But you need to put two molar of salt, which is well beyond um, classic electrostatic. Um, so now I will focus more on this coacervate uh, system. And um, so I we will use specific molecular weight. So we're going to use a very large PDAD-MAC and a very small uh, PAA. And we're going to tune, in fact, the, the charge ratio, Z. And we will study, in fact, the small z and the high z. And we will leave for later on the, the stoichiometry values. So if we do a uh, light scattering quickly, what we can see is that for low charge ratio, very low charge ratio, uh, the diffusion coefficient is very high. It has to do with uh, the, the, the fast mode found in uh, a very uh, charged uh, liquid. And uh, if you go up, in charge ratio, there is a strong uh, transition around z equal 0.6, where you start to generate much bigger object that we can call insoluble object compared to those guys here that are called soluble ones because they look like the original polyelectrolyte here. Um, if you do a sans neutron scattering experiment, it's even more obvious. What you, what you get is that you see a very different sun signature above and, uh, and, uh, and below the z equal 0.6 threshold. Uh, for a smaller charge ratio, basically, what you have, you have really soluble object. And above, you have uh, this curve here in Q minus 4, um, uh, showing that you have a spherical object somehow present in the solution. And here, I mean, uh, Kamanov and co-workers uh, in the 80s, they have foreseen the presence of soluble objects. And here, they, typically, we have a, indeed a large chain asymmetry, an excess of long chains, and a weak interaction, uh, because the PDAD-MAC PA is, a weak, is generating a weak interaction. So if we do some, sorry, fitting, if we do some fitting uh, throughout the, the different uh, charge ratio value, we, we can fit that at z equal 1 or small ones. We have, let's say, a Gaussian chain. We are get, getting through a polydispersed sphere with Gaussian chain. Uh, Gaussian chain coming from the fact that we are large polyelectrolyte chains, P and Mac. And if we keep increasing the z value, we are going on the other side, and we get polydispersed sphere. And um, this is typically what is going on here. Soluble chains, insoluble ones with uh, Gaussian chain hanging around here, and more spherical object when above, I mean, the, the, the stoichiometry. So obviously, if we change the, the asymmetric value, if we are using two equivalent molecular weight, uh, this is completely another story. We still have uh, uh, insoluble object, but the solid complex area doesn't show up anymore. 
so this is really linked to the fact that we are using uh, a, small, uh, a large uh, length scalar symmetry. Now, um, we focus on the particular case of uh, stoichiometry is equal one. Uh, and in this case, we are generating a coacervate. And uh, so the small sphere that I've shown you before, and if you uh, wait 24 hours, or if you uh, centrifuge, you can get a paste like that, very, um, very viscous, by the way. And so we have done some experiment on the asymmetric system and the symmetric system. By the way, the, the, the content of the polymer in that paste is very high, 23 and here, and more than 30% polymer in that paste. By NMR, also, we can check that the charge ratio is indeed not far away from one. Um, we have also reproduced somehow the, the scaling law of the polyelectrolytic peak of the PDAT mark. And the reason why is that in this paste, uh, the PDAT mark concentration is very high, uh, higher than one mole. And in, in this region, the PDAT mark is in a, 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 a domain where basically the polyelectrolytic peak scaling with the concentration. It's a new domain. If you want more in, insight about that, you can read this, uh, this very nice publication. So in this case, uh, in that paste, uh, if you do sand uh, scattering, um, you have three uh, different zones. Uh, I won't talk about the, the low Q angle, which is complicated, and nobody really understands what's going on here. But in the mid Q range, you can fit the, the data using um, Einstein via Nicolo for the structure factor, and you can get uh, access to the mesh size of the network, which is something that usually people are doing with semi, semi um, entangled solution. Uh, not, nothing really uh, uh, interesting here. And if you go uh, at very high Q, you can see here that the presence of a very strong cor correlation peak that, in fact, is coming from the presence of the PDAT MAC highly concentrated. And so in the network, the PDAT MAC peaks uh, keeps is a correlation length, uh, but is shrunk a little bit by the presence of the small polyacrylate chains that are shrinking, in fact, the network. Um, and the reason uh, it's because uh, PID and MAC chains are very stiff. The persistence length of, I mean, the non-electrostatic persistence length of PID and MAC is three nanometer. If you do the same uh, with PSS, for example, you will, you, you will not see a correlation peak at that IQ range. So this is just uh, some rheology uh, of the system, uh, of, the, of, the, of the paste. So in the case of small chain, uh, what you get is a very, very viscous solid, uh, sorry, uh, viscous liquid with a viscosity uh, 300 times the viscosity of water. Uh, and uh, if you are measuring the same story with the, um, the symmetric system, because the molecular weight of PAA is much larger, you start to see some viscoelasticity in, in the system. OK, so I guess. Uh, I'm coming to the conclusion. Uh, I, I've been very fast. But in any case, um, what we have been showing is that it's possible uh, through a stopped flow experiment uh, to show uh, clearly uh, if we do have a coacervation or, or aggregation phenomena, and we can monitor it uh, easily. We have shown also that uh, uh, the three possible state of uh, complex coacervation state uh, and uh, especially the presence of soluble complexes that, that were a bit difficult to understand in the past. And it's still pretty much debated. I have I've sent a, a paper a couple of months ago, and uh, the editor told me that this is not true. Uh, so it's still very um, a vivid debate around that. Um, and also that uh, in the highly concentrated paste, uh, the, the COA survey can be seen as a network of random mixed polyon chain with mesh size uh, much smaller than the radius of duration of the, of the chain, typically a 10 nanometer year. And uh, here we have also extra, extra stuff because the PDAT-MAC is rigid, and the presence of a rigid polyelectrolyte 
in fact dictate completely the overall structure. If you are using another polyelectrolyte, less stiff, you will not see this peak again. Okay, so uh, just I would like to thank my, uh, my co-workers and, uh, and collaborator throughout the year and the funding agency. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you very much. And we have, have time for questions, definitely. So, um, um, well, that's always uh, the, the first question here. No one else dares to ask the first question? <laughs> okay, it's yours. <laughs> Okay, uh, I was wondering about, uh, uh, you know, you can have different uh, uh, flow rates. How would the flow rate affect your results? You mean the, the stop flow yeah. experiment? Yeah. I mean, we can tune the flow rate, but not uh, completely, because uh, uh, there is um, typically, uh, if you want to keep a dead time, a short dead time, you cannot really tune that much okay. the flow rate. Uh, Otherwise, you might increase the dead time. So from a couple of milliseconds, you can go to 50 milliseconds. But in that case, we cannot follow the early stage event uh, of the complexation. OK. Uh, I had uh, a couple of more questions. The, the, uh, the polydispersity, what was the polydispersity of the polymers you used? You mean the? Yeah, you had the, the, the polymer you, you mix. Yeah, yeah. So the PDAD mac was, we bought it, we cleaned it. Uh, we separated, and at the end, uh, the polydispersity wa was still high, around uh, 1.6, oh. which is still high. For the small ones, it was very small. Okay. And, and but it doesn't change that much. Okay. Uh, my last question was, uh, in the uh, uh, scattering you, uh, curve you showed, it was a very strong upturn at low Q. I, I, I assume it means you have very big... Uh, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. It's a very big uh, aggregate. No, I mean, it, it, the, the, the upturn is, pre is present also for a single polyelectrolyte. And uh, here we don't have any aggregate, at least. Uh, we don't see it by rheology. We don't see it by neutron um, so far. So if you, if you look the curve, the same, I mean, you have an upturn for the free polyelectrolyte here. You see here? You see the, the, the black one, the black one is the sun signature of uh, Peter and Mac alone, okay? So concentrated Peter and Mac, but still alone. And you, you have this upturn uh, uh, coming over. So this is a typical of polyelectrolyte uh, solution. Even though uh, it's difficult to explain the origin of those upturns. That's why I didn't talk about that. Okay, we have a question. Yeah, uh, I would like to know the, some characteristics of the quark solvent. Okay, you have a particles of the quark solvations. The inside of... You mean the, 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 the big sphere? The small one, quark solvent. <laughs> yeah, but they are big. What is inside of the liquid? That's mean, a liquid, mean, liquid this, phase um, transition, yes? This one? No, no, yeah. Yeah, okay, even that's... Uh, this in, one, the yeah. paste? This is, uh, I mean, as I shown you at the beginning, when coesivation, uh, when you, you, you do the mixing and stoichiometry, what you generate yes. are those yes. uh, spherical objects. Okay, the but after a little while, they will coalesce and they will generate the paste you have seen at the end. Yeah, my question is that. Okay. That you see the particles inside there. Yeah. Inside of this particle is filled with a polymer network or just on the surface of it? No, no, that's it's a polymer question. network. Uh, 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 that's filled with a highly swollen network structure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've shown you here, th this space typically, you see it's 30% polymer content, which is a lot. And uh, the network uh, through uh, um, SANS. What we can say that it's that we have a, uh, a network with mesh sizes very small in the yeah, order so of 1.5 nanometer. Yeah. You see, so, so it's well beyond the concentrated regime. That's. Uh, did okay, I answer I, your I, question or? So what is the difference between the micro gel particle and the crustal bit? What's the difference? The, the first one. So the first one uh, are smaller object. Those guys here. 
it's you mean the, the, this small particle? You know, it, according to the definition of oh, quasar okay. beta, that's a liquid liquid phase phase separation. Yeah. Yes. In equilibrium. Yes, in, in equilibrium. equilibrium. So, if, if which I means that uh, inside of the particle there should be a liquid phase. But it is. What is in your case? The, you mentioned that that's a field with a net, highly swollen net. Yeah, it's just you imagine the, the, the picture yeah, I, yeah. I, I have is something like that. It's so the, this is a typical micro gel state. Yeah, the, the only difference is that you don't have any strong interaction in that case, in the case of the coassavate, okay? And if you remove, uh, in the case of the hydrogel, if you remove the supernat, if you remove the water, you can swell the hydrogel or you can shrink the hydrogel. If, here, if you remove the water on top of the, of the paste, the paste will disassemble, okay? I have been working on the hydrogel more than 30 years. Yeah, but that's why. Okay, uh, final question. Uh, small question. Did you do the, uh, the Newton scattering uh, in heavy water? Obviously. Yeah. Yes? <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's impossible to get any result, yeah. Any, any effect of the uh, replacement of light water by heavy water? We have done that. Uh, you're right that it's always uh, the question. We have done that in water, uh, at least with light scattering, which is because it's doable. With, and with, with light scattering, we didn't see any change uh, with water or with D2O. Okay. And then a final question. What about contrast variation to separate the contributions from the two different polymers? Yeah, that's, that's uh, what we want to do in, in the future. We have done stoppage flow under uh, a SANS beam as well, but the conservation was too fast to be able to be uh, monitored by SANS. Mm -hmm. But yeah, contrast matching, obviously, uh, we might do it one day if we have money. Okay, thank you very much again.